Hey guys, Mark McMahon, Mark McMahon Real Estate. Thanks for being here today. We're gonna talk about my second flip, which was roughly 11 years ago, I suspect. This one didn't go so well, and I'm gonna talk about what I did wrong, what I did right. There was many, many things I did wrong, very few things I did right on this one. If that sounds interesting, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and if you wanna make somebody's day, sign up for notifications. Allie loves to see that. Thanks so much. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, if you remember earlier, we had talked about I went to an investment club meeting. And if you didn't see the first video, it's right over here. It's a good one. It's about my first flip, and you should watch it first. So stop now. Actually, finish now. Like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, then go back to the other video, then come back and watch this one again. Perfect? Love it. All right, just joking. Anyway, so the first one, um, I'm at a investment club meeting. I sit down next to a guy that's flipping mobile homes. I'm broke, destitute, recently bankrupt. My wife has gone to Japan because she's fed up with all the crap that's going on in our lives, and I am at my wit's end with no money and nothing to do. I, I have no direction. I go to this investment club. Some guy's talking about buying real estate. I'm thinking I'm in the wrong place because there's no way I can afford to buy real estate right now. And I sit down next to a guy, as I said, that's flipping mobile homes. Light bulb moment, right? So went out immediately and started looking to buy a mobile home, found one and got it under contract, finished it, flipped it, made like 14 grand, give or take, <clears throat> and life was great. I was off to the races. I bought my second one during that time. Super excited about this one. It was much bigger and a better park. And this one was gonna be my home run. Didn't work out so well though. So here's what happened. I ended up partnering with that same gentleman that was sitting next to me, and I still have to give him credit for getting me involved in the game. But this second one didn't go well. So. I found the deal, I did all the construction, he provided the money. That was pretty much the, 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 the gist of it. I didn't ever end up making any money on it. I kind of got screwed on this one. So what I want to do right now is I want to kind of go over the numbers and explain the mistakes that I made. And then I want to talk about how you can avoid those mistakes at the end of the video. So put your seatbelt on and let's start talking some numbers. All right, guys, let's talk numbers. Let's see exactly what I did wrong and how I can fix it next time. So purchase price was 10 dollars Rehab was 5 k So we have a total of $15,000 into this project. Here's where it got kind of sticky. Like I said before, I brought the deal. I did all the construction myself. Again, I'm here doing all the labor myself. So the rehab probably would have been about $12,000 if someone else had done it. But I brought my sweat equity into the project, plus all the hours that it took for me to find the deal, going from park to park to park, finding the mobile home, getting it under contract, um, doing all that. So normally, uh, I would get paid for all of that. But this is, this is kind of what happened. So we have a total of $15,000 in the project, ARV, was 35,000. All right, so that would leave a total of 20K for profit. Didn't quite work out that way. So we tried to sell the mobile home and the park manager would not approve anybody. Now that wasn't my partner's fault. I worked my butt off trying to find a buyer for this and trying to get them approved by the park. That's the one negative about mobile home parks is that the manager has to approve whoever you sell to. Look, they can have all the cash for the purchase and not qualify at the park because of credit, lack of a job, whatever. So you've got two barriers in a mobile home park. It's not just the purchase, it's also qualifying almost like they're renting, well, which they are, they're leasing that space. So my problem with this one is every buyer I brought, whether they were qualified or not, they would not approve. Somewhere along the way, I'm not sure what I did, but I fractured my relationship with this manager. We finally found somebody, but they could not pay the entire price up front. So what we did is we financed it, we seller financed it to them. We got a total of 15,000 down and 
we finance the rest of it, the 20,000, all right? Sounds good so far. They started making their payments and we were supposed to split the principal reduction. That never happened, unfortunately. I never received a penny from that. Contractually, had we written paperwork up and I was smart enough to write the paperwork up, we would have made probably, well, $10,000 each plus interest. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. What happened is this person ended up paying and my partner ended up getting paid, but I never actually got any money from it. And stupidly, I never signed a contract with this gentleman. So because I had no money into it, I had no legal right to it. He had bought the mobile home. I got it under contract. It closed in his name, mistake number one. And then he brought the money in for the rehab and I provided the labor. And because I didn't sign a contract with him stating that I was going to get half the profits, he was able to walk away with the whole thing. Now, I'm assuming he may have had some problems with this person, but over the years, I'm sure he ended up getting his money and he never did end up calling me on that to tell me, Mark, I got your money. Come on over and pick it up anytime. Never happened. I never heard from him again. Well, actually, I heard from him again because unfortunately I did another deal with him, but that's another video for another time. So here's the thing, guys. Here's the lessons I learned. Number one, if you're going to partner with somebody, ironclad contract. Do not go into a deal without a solid contract. This is like a marriage, all right? Like a prenuptial agreement. You want to make sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Everything's spelled out. If someone gets hit by a bus, there's got to be some sort of a contingency plan so that you get paid. All right, that's number one. Number two, I didn't go in with any sort of a plan. I really didn't. Normally, I, I now, if, if on the very rare occasions that I partner with people, I will write down exactly what I expect and what I expect from them. Didn't do that on this one. It was just all verbal. I said, you know, here's the deal. You provide the money, I'll provide the labor. And he provided the money for the purchase, he provided the money for the construction, and I did everything. And that's the way it worked out, guys. So, like I said, valuable lesson, get a contract, number one. Number two, have a plan. Number three, be able to back it up. Don't be afraid to go after somebody if they screw you. I never even, I just, the guy said, you know what, I'm just not getting paid very often on this. And, and you know, I feel like I'm putting up with all the crap, so I'm not going to pay you. And that was that. I didn't fight it. I didn't go to war with them or anything, and I probably should have. I probably should have stood up for myself, but I really didn't know anything about real estate at the time. I had just made money on my first deal, right? You guys knew about that, and then this happened. So anyway, guys, please, please don't put yourself in that situation. Make sure that when you do a deal, you have all the paperwork that is going to bind that to you so that you'll end up getting paid, okay? All right. We're going to do one more video series on this, or no, we're going to do actually, how many more do we have? Five videos. We have a total of five. This is number two. So we've got three more after this on the next three flips we did. Some were good, some were bad, some were great. So uh, we'll, we'll go over that uh, in the uh, next three videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please hit the like buttons. Please subscribe. Sign up for notifications for Allie. And if you guys are interested in getting started in real estate uh, investing right away, please sign up down below for our list on how to get started in real estate investing. It's a great simple thing to do. It'll push you along and get you motivated to move forward, even if you don't have any money right now. All right, guys, have a great one and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, check out these two videos. They're really going to help you on your investment journey. I'm also on Instagram, tons of great video content there, really good stuff. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.